Hey, what's happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you are all doing well. Today's video is on <laughs> everybody's favourite footballer, certainly the nicest footballer in world football, N'Golo Kante. But as per usual, before we get into today's video, I'd like to request that you do hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you can keep up with my content. Again, like usual, I only want you to subscribe if you've watched my content before and you enjoy my videos. Otherwise, it's pointless, but hopefully you do enjoy my videos. Anyway, let's get on with it. Who is N'Golo Kante? N'Golo Kante is a Parisian 28-year-old who has the smile that could melt the ice caps. A few years ago, N'Golo Kante moved to the Premier League and soon after he won the Premier League with Leicester City. Probably the league's biggest, well, definitely the league's biggest fairy tale story. After his amazing season with Leicester City, N'Golo Kante was recognised as the best engine in that midfield or the best engine in the Premier League. He got his big money move to Chelsea. Now when I say big money move, I think Chelsea bought N'Golo Kante for £32 million. And for what followed, or certainly even just their Premier League he won, £32 million seems like an absolute snip. Especially if you're looking at teams like Manchester United at the moment, who are spending £52 million on players like Fred, who can't even get in the team. N'Golo Kante for £32 million. Anyway, immediately N'Golo Kante won the Premier League again with Chelsea and then the following year he won the FA Cup and then the following year he won the Europa League. Trophy, 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 trophy. Oh yeah, and in between all of that he won the World Cup, which ain't bad. Oh yeah, he also won PFA Player of the Year Award, he won um, the Football Writers Player of the Year Award, he won one EA Sports player of the year award he won a lot of individual awards and has a lot of accolades before last season or at the beginning of last season N'Golo Kante widely regarded as the best box-to-box -box interceptive midfielder in world football and rightly so and to Maurizio Sarri and with him his 4-3-3 that doesn't really accommodate an N'Golo Kante style of player now I talked about this before Sarri arrived, I actually thought there's a chance Chelsea might sell N'Golo Kante. So, why is that? Chelsea, Marina Graniscai, the board, Roman, whatever, they wanted to bring Maurizio Sarri in and his football. They wanted his 4-3-3 to sort of emulate kind of what Liverpool and Manchester City are doing. They wanted to bring his style and his philosophy at Chelsea, but they all would have known really well that with that Kante does not play in a midfield two where he does his best work. They would have known that he'll bring in a sort of Regista style player, well they know he wanted Jorginho who's part of the deal, and he becomes that metronomic cog in his system. He didn't just dump Kante out of a two-man midfield out of nowhere, this would have all been part of the plan with the coach Maurizio Sarri and Chelsea Football Club. And ultimately it did work out, I mean you can watch my video on Jorginho, I think he's a good player, but it's a very different approach to N'Golo Kante. So where does this leave Kante? It's important to note at this point Kante doesn't play a central lone pivot or certainly would not play the role that Jorginho is asked to do, to just stay anchored and have so many passes recycled through you and just know where everyone is at once. That's almost exactly what Kante cannot do. <laughs> I mean, maybe permanent goal as well. Kante needs to be running around and intercepting balls, winning back possession, putting in tackles, that sort of thing. Even when Kante was playing much deeper for Leicester, Chelsea and even Khan and stuff, he was playing in a midfield too. He'd just move around, get the ball back, give it to his partner, whether it be drink water or Fabregas or Matic, and they'll get rid of it. Like previously stated, this new role would make him rather immobile and it would not only be wasting his skills, but he probably doesn't have the attribute to recycle possession through quick passing that much like Jorginho could. And to reiterate my point, think about when he was playing at Leicester or the first season at Chelsea. It was a joke about, oh, Kante covers every blade of grass and, you know, we think there's two of them and then the Kante twins meme was born. This was not a defender just sitting, screening the back four. This was a player that was running round as a destroyer. So we know he could not play the Jorginho role, nor could he sit at the base of that midfield in Sari system. So he was moved to right centre mid. When the season started, I think he might have scored a goal quickly and everyone thought, ooh, 
Kante, new position. But there was a lot of frustrations with Kante in his new role. Kante arriving late in the box and the tanks breaking down, God bless him. Or even when he tried to jump and get his head on the ball. I mean, how tall is Kante, do you know what I mean? It was all difficult to see. And fans, media, I don't want to say analysts because they probably know better, but journalists, they all look at that and they just hark back to the glory days of Angolo Kante. As previously explained, because of the way Chelsea won Sari to play and it worked out in the end for the trophy, two finals, they needed his, Sari to play his way. So what was Kante doing in that right centre mid role? I mean, it was difficult at first and it was painful to see, but you know what? Kante enjoyed last season playing under Maurizio Sari. He stayed it a few times. He's enjoyed learning the new technical skills of that role, just becoming more sort of lucid to what people in that part of the pitch require of him and what, what there is to do up there. I mean, he was expanding his footballing horizons. And in theory, he was turning over position further up the pitch, which he was. But it became so much more than that. Kante evolved into an incredibly important part of Chelsea's attack. And I'll get onto that in a second and give you an example. But not only that, he became a better all-rounded player. He actually had eight goal contributions last season, which is really, really good. Kante was no longer looking for, say, a number 10 or wide forwards. He could win possession back and give it straight to a forward who might assist another forward. You know, he was... Once he got bedded into the concept, he became integral, but it was more, less direct than what I'm kind of like insinuating here. It was more of like an attacking flow state. Now that's, <laughs> that might sound a bit weird, but let me explain myself and let me offer you an example, right? The perfect example of how important Kante became to Chelsea's attack towards the latter part of the season when he learned the role better would be Chelsea's 2-2 draw to Burnley. Kante scored the opener in that game and by I think like 14 minutes or something Chelsea had scored two goals but Kante came off with a hamstring injury. Now the two goals Chelsea conceded to Burnley that day were both from set piece goals and the only fault you could say for them goals going in was zonal marking. Now that could be a huge critique of yours to Maurizio Sarri but that's for a different video. But it wasn't through open play. So think about this. Before Kante came off, Chelsea looked like they could just keep scoring and scoring and scoring. In terms of the synergy and team chemistry and attack, everything was flowing as normal. A lot more was going through Kante than it was early doors in the season. And there was balance and that sort of equilibrium to the attack. As soon as Kante comes off with that hammy injury, that dissipates completely. Chelsea look lost. They can no longer, or they certainly don't look like they have that air of scoring all the time. So think about that game. N'Golo Kante, widely accepted as the best sort of interceptive, defensive midfielder, he comes off the pitch. But him coming off the pitch doesn't prevent either of those two goals going in, those two set piece goals, because he can't prevent that. So he can't help the go, <laughs> he can't prevent the goals from going in, but him coming off, prevents Chelsea from scoring more. This is just an example how Kante did become incredibly important to the attack. I'm only stating all of this for balance. I still personally think Kante is the best defensive interceptive midfielder in the world. I don't think he's the best attacking midfielder in the world, but he developed his all round game. He became more cerebral in the whole game of football and he knows what it's like to be up the pitch there and what those players require and he's just technically better and his skill set grew. And to highlight a couple of these facts, let's take a look at some numbers. In Kante's first season for Chelsea playing under Antonio Conte, he was making six tackles and interceptions per game with 1.2 clearances, which is still pretty decent. That is a superb defensive output and that's why he was widely regarded as the best destroyer, interceptive midfielder in world football, and rightly so. But, you know, that was kind of it. He was only, he was barely making half a key pass per game. I think he got one goal, one assist all season. Now, I know what you're saying. He would not have been asked to do any of that. He's got that, that sort of solo job. But as modern football progresses, 
Every player has to be able to do everything more and more and more. Even if you're amazing and the best at something, you need to be able to do the other stuff a little bit as well. Look at how fullbacks have developed over the years in the Premier League, even centre-backs, how the, their roles have changed and how they need to be able to do different things. And really everyone on the pitch needs to be able to score. And if they're in the position to score, convert. Fast forward to last season under Maurizio Sarri. Ancolo Kante made eight goal contributions last season with four goals and four assists and suddenly he was executing 1.3 key passes per game becoming an important member of the attack. Four goals from open play by the way. I just want to remind you how that's only two less than Paul Pogba from open play. Just saying. So clearly when it comes to the attacking phase Ngolo Kante is a far more polished player in that sense. He knows where to be, what to go, and even if he moves back into a sort of more defensive role, that knowledge is so valuable to bring back with him for a better understanding of his <laughs> teammates in front of him. Defensively, Kante was still making 3.3 tackles and interceptions per game, he was just doing it further up the pitch, and he maintained a near immaculate 88% pass accuracy under Maurizio Sarri. So he had an all-round game all of a sudden. Suddenly he's a very he's gone from like a world-class destroyer interceptor to an all-round very, very good midfielder. Okay, so that's enough of the numbers for a second. So I know what you're probably saying. You're going, Yan, he's gone from the world's best at something to an all-round very good something. I agree, but that was a necessity for Chelsea's system at the time and it worked ultimately. But Lampard coming in, he will look to restore Kante to a more defensive role again. But don't reflect negatively on Kante's time under Maurizio Sarri, because he's developed as a footballer. He's still incredibly fit. He's got this sort of immense pass coaching under his belt under Sarri. He understands the offensive players better, and he can still do all the stuff he was doing before under Conte and Ranieri. He's just a more well-rounded, developed player that can see out the last five, six years of his footballing prime, a more accomplished, full player. And who knows, right, now he's had this season on the story, even when he's playing further back, he might still bang a few goals, because now we know he's got it in him. Right, ladies and gents, that is my video on N'Golo Kante. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do like the video and get down in the comments. This is obviously a huge talking point. Um, what do you think? Do you agree with me? Are you pleased that he had that developmental time with Sari? Do you think it was a waste? Do you think Sari should have just played a two-man midfield? Let me know your thoughts. And um, I want to take a second to thank you all for supporting the channel. Um, like I said, I'm really pleased with its growth. I have made a Patreon if you want to donate $1 a month to help me keep the channel going. I think there's like 8 of you that's donated a dollar so far, which means a lot. I can't get the channel monetized for a while and I do actually spend a lot of money in keeping the channel going as well as I'm sure you can tell a lot of time on videos. So if you'd like to help me out and donate a dollar a month or however much you feel comfortable with, I'll put a link down in the description to my Patreon. But that's it guys, I hope you enjoy the football and I'll see you later. So tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double, silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle, yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble, I only love this paper, sorry I don't I let me back.